Hi everyone and welcome to your Bulldog Beginner series. I'm Michelle B. I'm excited to be here with you over these next several weeks. These are half hour long practices. I'm going to recommend you grab some yoga props from home if you have them. If you don't, let's try to improvise and get creative. So if you don't have two yoga blocks for today's practice, I'm going to invite you to maybe consider grabbing um, some heavy books or maybe a roll of toilet paper or two. So go ahead and grab those props if you don't already have them at your mat and I'm going to meet you there after I get our music started. We'll get a bit more into what the series is all about together from there. All right, so everyone just take a comfortable seat to start. I'm going to face you as we begin here. So what is beginner yoga for a bulldog? Well, I want to give you some more instruction into getting into the poses that you'll see in any of our Activate or Invigorate classes. So if it's been a little while since you've been onto your mat, maybe you've recently brought new life into the world, or you're recovering from an injury, or you just got wrapped up in life and haven't made the time for your mat and you're back, amazing. Welcome. And if you're brand new, brand spanking new to yoga, this is your first yoga class you've ever taken, Welcome to the Bulldog family. We're so excited to have you with us. And full disclosure, you guys, uh, while I've taught a lot of beginner series in my yoga career, this is a first for me teaching it virtually. So I'm very much a beginner like yourself today as well. So we're just gonna get through this practice together and move from there. The first thing I want to briefly discuss is your breath. Like what does it mean to breathe during a yoga practice? Because that's like the entire point. If you did nothing else but breathe intentionally, deeply in and out through the back of your throat for the next 30 minutes, that would be a yoga class for sure. So we talk about the breath a lot, we cue the breath a lot. So I wanna give you a little bit of an introduction of to what that yoga breath is all about. So we say often here that what the yoga breath is doing is creating a little heat from the inside out. And that's true, it's great. It's great to start warming up your body by just establishing the breath. But it's how we move through our yoga poses. Each breath is intentional. The way we breathe in and maybe extend our arms overhead or as we exhale and fold our bodies in half, we're doing so mindfully. So a little bit of a guide into finding and establishing your yoga breath. Let's just start together by taking a deep breath in through the nose. Open your mouth and exhale. And basically you're gonna recreate that breath, but now with your lips sealed. So inhale. Notice the exhale, it's audible. Go ahead and try to see if you can do that again. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And what I want you to pay attention to as you continue that yoga breath is evening out the inhales and the exhales. So maybe you're starting for just a three second inhale. See if you can match it with a three second exhale. And maybe over time you're just building your way up to four second inhales and exhales, five second, maybe even six seconds as you progress. So just pay attention to the breath. What that's going to do is help neutralize your nervous system. So if we're taking really short inhales and long exhales, we're inviting a little lethargy into the body. Or if we're taking really, really long inhales and shorter exhales, we're bringing in a little anxiety. And we wanna release all of that, particularly when we're on our mat, so we can really stay present and focused with what's going on in the body. So let's just take a few more here together, breathe in. Breathe out. Think of breathing, inhale all the way from the base of your belly. And all the way back down into it. So there is a little contraction happening in your core. Let's take one more inhale. Exhale. Good, awesome work. Hopefully you're feeling calmer already. 
So if you have your blocks, place them towards the top corners of your mat or maybe a little bit of the way down. We're gonna come into child's pose from here. It's just a really awesome way to open up through the lower back before we move. So I'm gonna bring my toes together and then separate my knees. I always say it either a little or a lot. So if you're newer and your back is feeling a little tight, maybe you've been sitting at a desk all morning long, bring those knees a little closer. If you're feeling open and you don't feel any cranking on that lower back, you can separate the knees a little wider than your hips. And then you're gonna walk your arms out long in front of you. So if your forehead isn't coming down to meet your mouth, that's where these awesome props come in. And you're just gonna place your forehead on a block like so. Okay. If you have anything going on in your neck or your shoulders and it's too much to extend the arms overhead, then you're always welcome to drop your arms down by your side. And by the way, folks, if you have really, really tight hips and your tailbone isn't coming down towards your heels, please be kind to yourself, it's okay. And just take it as a modified variation, lifting your tailbone away from your seats a few inches. All right, let's come back to that yoga breath, inhale. Exhale. Breathe around your kidney band, so where the top of your yoga pants or your belt lays. Breathing across your lower back, take one more inhale and one more exhale. And then we're gonna come into tabletop position from here. Super simple movement for this first class together. So in our tabletops, we wanna find a neutral spine where we're not arching and we're not doming. We're gonna get into that in just a moment, but it's a nice neutral spine where I could place a cup of coffee on top of your back and it wouldn't go anywhere. And notice how my joints are stacked here. I'm gonna bring my wrists directly underneath um, my shoulders and my knees directly underneath my knee, my hips. Pull your belly in slightly just to maintain that neutral spine and gaze between your fingertips. And now we're gonna start linking movement with breath. So on an inhale, we're gonna arch through the spine, tuck your tailbone up towards the ceiling, lift your chin, lift your chest. And then as you exhale, reverse it, pull your chin in towards your chest, lift your belly nice and high. Feeling that space between your shoulder blades. Do that again, inhale, drop the belly down, roll the shoulders, lift the seat, lift the chin. Exhale, reverse. One more deep breath in. Maybe lift the chin a little higher. And a deep breath out. Good. And then come back to that neutral spine. And we're going to come into our first kind of full body pose with a plank. So before we even step our feet back, I want you to check out your fingertips, making sure that all 10 fingers are either pointing directly towards the front of your mat, or if you have a little bit of tightness in your shoulders, it's okay to spin your fingertips out a few degrees, okay? Keep the shoulders over the wrists, step your right foot back. Let's just for a breath or two kind of rock back and forth in our heel, getting a little stretch through the calf, and then bring it back, and we're gonna do the same thing on the left. Step your left foot back, rock your weight forward and back a few times. Just opening up through the back of the body before we find that first plank and then eventually a down dog. And then step your right foot back and step your left foot back. Take a quick peek back at your toes. Make sure your feet are lined up on a railroad tracks and not a balance beam. So your big toes aren't touching, they're about hip distance apart. Then from there, I want you to bring your chin to neutral. So we're not dropping our head down in our plank and we're not arching through the neck. It's nice and neutral, gazes over the tip of the nose. And we're just gonna hold here. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Really pressing through the heels, inhale. Exhale. And then find a little bit more engagement through your belly. I promise we're not here much longer. Think of dragging your heels towards your palms and your palms back towards your heels. One more inhale. And then from here, exhale, start to soften your knees a lot. Pull your chest towards your thighs. Drop your head between your arms and maybe straighten out your legs a little or a lot and find a downward facing dog. 
So I'm just kind of resituating my hands. I was a little close to the back of the mat. And again, your feet are on railroad tracks and out of balance beam. Start to bend your knees together, or one at a time. There's no right or wrong here. The aim is to find like an upside down V shape with your body. And this, my friends, is an inversion. Anytime your head is below your heart, you are in an inver inverted position. So you might notice your heart rate start to increase a bit. And that's where we return to our yoga breath to calm things down. So take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Good. Keep lifting your tailbone up towards the ceiling. Inhale. Exhale. Take one more full breath in. Breathe into your back body. Full breath out. So a few things, you guys. The heels never have to come all the way down towards the mat, but I want you to think of sending them that direction, okay? Again, they never have to come all the way down. Sometimes it's just the anatomy of our bodies that aren't going to let that happen, and it's okay. All right, from here, bend your knees a lot. Gaze past your thumbs and take tiny little baby steps up towards the top of your mat and separate your feet hip distance apart. So you can measure that off by bringing your two fists together and planting them between your big toes. <sighs> from here, grab a hold of opposite elbows and we're gonna come into our first forward fold. Another inversion. And rock our hips from side to side. And hopefully this feels pretty lovely. And then come to stillness. So really feeling the stretch through the back of the legs here. Go ahead and take one more deep breath in. Deep breath out. Good. And then release your elbows. Grab a hold of your blocks and place them a few inches in front of your feet on the pinky toe edge side. So a little wider than hip distance apart. And we're going to lift into a flat back. So on an inhale, press through your feet. We're going to talk about them a little bit more in a moment. Press through your hands and lift your chest about halfway up. So you may be here. Totally fine. Especially if you have tighter hamstrings. No worries. What I want you to find is that pulling through your belly again so you're not arching here and you're not just hanging out folding forward. It's intentional. There's a flat back. So an engagement through your core to maintain it. Take one more breath. And then use your exhale. Just draw your chin to your chest. Refold. It's okay for your knees to be soft. Place those blocks off to the side of your mat. Bring your hands to your hips. On your inhale, pull your elbows in nice and tight. And exhale, press down into your feet. Come all the way up to stand. Gaze is forward, chin is neutral. Nice work, everyone. I'm just going to turn myself to face you guys here. We're just going to find our feet a little bit before we start to move again. So separate your feet hip distance apart. Maintain that space so your heels are in line with your hips. Arms down by your side with your palms forward, mountain pose. So a super important pose in your yoga practice, standing tall, standing intentionally. So anytime you're coming to stand, we're not just kind of hanging out as we would at home or the way we do when we're talking on the telephone or scrolling, am I right? We're gonna stand with intention, creating a lot of length through the body, some space for the spine and the chest so we can take those long, deep, intentional breaths. I notice with my palms spun forward, my shoulders are drawing back. When I flip it, they roll towards one another. All right, coming back to the feet. Really connecting. Debate out there whether it's four corners of your feet or three. I kind of think of it as three, the ball, and then, you know, as you shift your weight forward, that's when you can really feel the balls of your feet, the heels, maybe that's one piece, maybe it's two, but kind of just rock your weight forward and back, noticing the weight in the balls of your feet and noticing the weight in the heels, and then come somewhere in the middle, okay? So you can connect with the corners of the balls of your feet and your heels, like an upside down triangle, and this is neutral. Holding here, take one more deep breath in, deep breath out. Bring your right hand to your hip. 
And we're gonna take our left arm up and overhead. Again, if you have anything going on in your neck or your shoulders, just bend your elbow and plant the hand behind the back of your head. We're gonna start to open up through the side body. Take an inhale here. And exhale, take a gentle sway over to the right. So what we're doing is opening up through the entire left side of the body. So when you connect now to the outer edge of your left foot, really press down in order to reach a little higher through that left hand. Let's take one more breath here, inhale. Exhale. And then inhale, come back to center, find your mountain pose, and we'll do that on the other side. Left hand to your hip. Inhale, reach the right arm up. Press your hand into the hip as you gently sway over to the left. Now opening up through the right side of the body. And notice that little shift of the weight down into your feet. Press from the outer edge of your right foot. Let's take one more deep breath in. And deep breath out. And then inhale, come back to center. Release your arms down by your side. Find your tall mountain pose. I'm gonna turn facing the front of my mat again. Everyone bring your hands to your hips. We're gonna find a gentle standing back bend, finding some extension through the spine, opening up through the chest. So hands can stay here, or you can bring your hands a little closer together at your lower back, thumbs pointing up towards the ceiling. If that's not happening quite yet, no worries. Take a deep breath in, pull your belly into your spine and press through your feet. And then exhale, start to guide your hips forward as you think of lifting your chest up towards the ceiling. So what we don't wanna see happen here is you to think you're coming into a bigger back bend by jacking your neck and lifting your chin up towards the ceiling. Not fun. So just remain nice and tall and long through the back of your neck. Let's take one more breath here. And then bring your gaze back to center. Awesome work. Take an inhale and stretch your arms high overhead. Maybe the palms press, it's not necessary. And then exhale, fold in half. I always come into a forward fold with soft knees because I have tight hips and hamstrings. And then I'm gonna place my hands on my blocks. They can be on any setting, just framing up my feet. Come into that flat back that we talked about again. So you can remain with your hands on your blocks. You can even bring yourself up, prop yourself up a little higher, placing your hands right below your kneecaps. Take a deep breath in. And then exhale, release those hands back down to your blocks. You're gonna step your right foot back into a lunge. So same position of the feet that we took with the plank and the down dog. Feet are on railroad tracks, not a balance beam. All right, and then from here, I'm gonna need to drop that back knee down. You can untuck your toes if that feels a little kinder on your ankle. And bend a little deeper into your left knee if that's available to you. What we're finding here is a nice stretch through the front of your right hip. Good. Let's take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. Take one more here, inhale. Exhale. And then just kind of steer your hips and that left knee back over the ankle. Tuck your right toes. Press through the heel as you lift off your back knee and see if you can hold here for two breaths. So you're definitely gonna start to notice those front quads turn on a bit more than when that back knee was down. Let's take one more inhale. And then exhale, step your right foot to meet your left. Fold deeply. Good. On an inhale, keep your hands on your blocks or bring your hands to your shins. Let's come back into a flat back, kind of resetting the spine here. And then on the other side, release the hands. Step your left foot way to the back of your mat. Lower the knee down and bend a little deeper into your front knee. Good. You can untuck your toes, take a deep breath in, breathing into the left hip. Deep breath out. Let's take one more together, inhale. Exhale, pull your hips slightly back so you bring the right knee over the ankle, tuck your left toes, press through the heel, lift off your back knee and hold here in this low lunge, inhale. Exhale, feel the right quads coming alive as you take one more inhale. And then exhale. 
Step your left foot forward to meet your right. Feet hip distance, full deeply. Now press through your feet. Come all the way up to stand. Reaching from your feet to your fingers. Arms stretch high overhead. And then let's exhale. Return to that mountain pose. Good. From here, I want you to keep the blocks off to the side and keep your feet hip distance apart. We're gonna come into our first chair pose. So if you ever have anything going on in your lower back, it's ideal that you would bring your feet hip distance apart instead of bringing your big toes to touch, okay? You can even place one of the blocks between your thighs if you would like. I'm gonna kinda leave that out for today. Maybe we'll work into that a little later in the series. We're gonna inhale, reach the arms high up overhead. The modification will be to bring hands to heart center and exhale, bend deeply into your knees. Good. So take a quick peek down, make sure you can see all 10 of your toes. You don't want your knees too far over your ankles and your big toes. You might think you're coming into the pose a little deeper, but it's not gonna be kind on those ankles over time. So really pull the hips and the booty way back. Staying here, again, feeling the legs kind of turn on, become a bit more alive. Maybe you're even shaking. Let's return to that yoga breath. Inhale. Exhale. Good. And then fun. Let's release it. Inhale. Press through the feet, strain the legs, reach arms nice and high. And exhale. See if you can lower all the way down. From, in, from here, either bring your hands to your blocks or lift into your flat back. We're once again going to step that right foot way to the back of our mats. All right, so here we are in this low lunge. If at any point in time you need to tap the back knee down like we did in the beginning, you're totally welcome to do that, always, okay? Otherwise, if you want to give the low lunge into a high lunge a shot, you're gonna keep that back knee lifted. Start to wrap your shoulders together. See how I'm coming a little higher up on my fingertips on the blocks? And pull your belly into your spine. Let's inhale, see if we can even hover the fingertips. It can only be for a breath, no worries. And then hold. Good. Now my left leg is really speaking to me. We're gonna inhale, just float our arms behind us and find airplane wings. And then sweep those fingers forward. Lift your chest to bring your shoulders over your hips. And here we are, high lunge. So again, modify by tapping this back knee down. Otherwise, stay lifted. Press through the back heel as you send your front knee forward. And hold. Good. You guys doing okay? All right, let's take one more breath together. Inhale. And exhale, drop those hands down, framing out your front foot, and step your right foot forward. Come halfway up into a flat back, and we're gonna flow right into the other side. Release your hands, and bring your left foot way to the back of your mat. So keep that back leg nice and active. It's working just as much as the front one is, okay? And then from here, maybe you're lifting your blocks to the highest setting, or maybe you're starting to hover your fingertips. Good. Even though your legs are apart, I want you to think of drawing your inner thighs towards one another. So your hips are working in this shape as well. And then on your in-breath, float your arms behind you, airplane wings. And then exhale, sweep your fingers forward. Lift your chest. High lunge here, or the modified variation. Either way, you're gonna feel the stretch through the front of your back hip. So I'm gonna stay down on this side just so you guys can see what it looks like. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Let's take one more inhale. Exhale. Release your hands down to the blocks. Lift off your back knee. And from here, you're gonna step that left foot forward to meet your right. Place your blocks off to the side. Find your flat back so hands can come to shins. And exhale, fold. And then press through the feet, come up to stand. Stretch from your feet to your fingers. Drop your arms down by your side. Find your tall mountain pose. Good. 
and then inhale. Let's reset, reach up. Exhale, fold over, soften knees. This time you're gonna lift halfway into your flat back and then plant your hands. Step your right foot back, then your left foot back. You'll be in a high plank. Lift your hips up and back. Maybe it's through soften knees again to downward facing dog. Send some breath into your back body, into the back of your legs. And take one more here. Inhale. Exhale. Good. And then you're going to rock your weight forward, come back into that high plank where the shoulders are over the wrists, and tap your knees down. Awesome work, you guys. I'm going to place my hands on blocks on the lowest setting. Just in order to step one foot through at a time here, I need a little bit more length for my arm, so I recommend you do the same, but not necessary. All right, so from this kind of variation of tabletop, I'm gonna untuck my toes and extend my right leg straight back behind me and hold here, good. So now we're almost in like, half of an elevated high plank with that back leg. You're still pressing through the heel, getting nice and long. And take one more inhale. And then on your exhale, I want you to pull that knee in towards your nose and step your foot between your hands. Good. So we've been here before, right, in our low lunge. But from this place, maybe elevate your blocks a little bit. I want you to swing your left heel out to the side. Okay, and then from this place, we're gonna come up into a knee down warrior two. It's actually one of my favorite ways to come into warrior two. So I'm gonna keep my shoulders over the hips so we're not kind of about, not about to like go on a surfboard. We're gonna pull a little bit more through those back fingertips where I'm wiggling my hand and keep the shoulders stacked. And then gaze will come over my right middle finger and ring finger. And we're just holding it here. Take a deep I breath in. On the and a deep breath out. Yeah, I can Inhale. The I on the Exhale. One hey, more deep breath in. I got to deep do breath out. Today. And now we want you to lean slightly down, forward. You're going to bring that right elbow towards your knee or your thigh. Take your left arm and reach it up towards the ceiling. So I'm gonna break these poses down a little bit more when I'm facing you on the other side. This is called our side angle, our modified side angle to start. And then if it feels appropriate in your body, spin your left pinky forward and take your arm up and overhead. So you're really opening up deeper through the left side of your body. And try not to fall or collapse into your chest and your shoulder. So keep hugging your shoulders together. It's even helpful to kind of press that form into the thigh. And take one more inhale. And one more exhale. Grab a hold of one of your blocks as you rise up. Place it into your back hand. So that would be the left hand. Find your warrior two. And now you're just going to drop that left hand down. Flip your right palm. Take that top arm up and over. And find our modified radiant reverse warrior. Now we're opening up through the right side of the body. See if you can remain low in your front leg. Let's take one more deep breath in. And deep breath out. Place that block off to the side of your mat. We're going to come into warrior two one more time. And then we're just going to kind of cartwheel our hands down. You can place your left hand back to a block. Swing your left heel to the back of your mat and then step your right knee to meet your left. Let's reset our spine by taking a round of cat and cow with or without your hands on blocks. Inhale, drop your belly, roll your shoulders together. Exhale, tuck your chin to your chest, lift your belly high. Good. Grab those blocks, come into a neutral spine. So I'm gonna go for a slightly higher setting. I happen to have like long limbs and a short torso, so it's really challenging for even after all the years 
maybe come down to this setting. I'm um, practicing yoga to step my foot all the way through between my hands, so I need a little assist. And that's what these props are used for. Let's take one more breath, and then curl your knee in towards your nose and see if you can place that foot between your hands. Good, from here, you're gonna spin your right toes off to the side of your mat. Maybe plant one block halfway down. And we're coming into that knee down variation of warrior two. So I wanna kind of break down your warrior two here. We don't want the shoulders jacked up by the ears. They're not earrings, so relax them down. It's helpful to even flip your palms up and down just so you know they're rolling back and relax down. And then your gaze is ideally over your fingertips facing forward. Take an inhale. And an exhale. Good. So what's happening in our warrior twos is we have one hip doing an internal rotation. That would be the back end. And then one doing an external rotation. So there's a lot going on in our warrior poses, particularly warrior one, two, and three. So. And just notice that. Breathe into the opening you're creating in the front of your hips and even this front inner thigh. And then reach slightly forward. Remember I told you not to surf, now I want you to. As you just lower that forearm down and take your right arm, reach it nice and high. Good. So then you'll find the extended variation by spinning your pinky forward. What that's doing is internally rotating your shoulder and you'll take the top arm up and overhead. I did forget to mention a modification will, just like we did in that standing side bend series, to bring the back of your hand to your head if taking that arm overhead is too much. No worries either way. We want this to be a practice of a lifetime, so you make it work for you. Grab a hold of your block, place it into your back hand. That would be the right one as you find warrior two, shoulders over hips, and then lower that back block down on any setting you choose. Take your top arm up and over, find your radiant warrior here. Take an inhale, exhale, and again with these side stretch poses, these side body openers, we're just creating more space between our rib cage, our intercostals so we can take longer and deeper breaths. Those even length inhales and exhales. One more here. And then you can bring your block along for the ride. Find your warrior two and then kind of cartwheel down. Release that right heel to the back of your mat. Step your left knee back to meet it. Place your blocks off to the side. Bring your big toes to touch. Here we are yet again, child's pose. <sighs> Taking the work, inhale. Exhale. One more deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Start to walk your hands towards your heels. Roll into a seat. I forgot my little handy clip to keep this core wrapped behind me. I'm gonna turn to face you. All right, so I'm, I'm hot, I'm warm, I'm sweaty, <laughs> and I hope you are too. Just because beginner, it's a beginner class doesn't mean it's going to be easy. You might be saying hello to muscle groups you haven't said hello to in quite some time. So be sure to hydrate, be sure to be kind to yourself, and know that you've accomplished something really big today something that was maybe potentially new or something that you walked away for for whatever reason and that you're coming back to because you know in the past it has served you so for whatever reason you came onto your mat i see you and i thank you for joining me today hold on one minute
Thank you so much, guys. We worked on a few of our lunges today in this first installment of Bulldog Beginner Yoga, and we're just going to keep building and growing together from there. So I hope you enjoyed everything. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments. Follow us online at Bulldog Yoga. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, all social media. We'd love to hear your, any feedback you might have for us. Thanks, everyone, and I'll see you next week.